since Apollo in 1972 no man has reached the moon beyond Earth orbits. That's why the NASA has officially been trying to change that since 2004. When President George W. Bush announced what became the agency's Back to the Moon Constellation program in 2010, the Obama administration canceled Constellation but two key pieces of the program survived the Orion crew capsule and a rocket that became what is now the Space Launch System or the SLS. Both vehicles are being developed using classic cost plus contracting where NASA pays for the full cost of development even if costs rise far above initial estimates NASA's Artemis program will use the SLS to blast astronauts to lunar orbit aboard Orion, where they will meet up with a previously in-placed lunar lander to travel to the surface and back it's worth noting then that rather than building a lunar lander in-house the way it does with the SLS and Orion, NASA opted to pay space companies a fixed price to build their own lunar landers which the companies will own with little. Funds to go on and the prospect of seeing the moon landings drag out for many more years. The agency finally decided to pick the cheapest and most likely to succeed option SpaceX NASA awarded a billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk's company with a $2.9 billion contract for the development of its Starship Super Rocket as a lunar landing system for astronauts in the Artemis 3 missions later to launch in 2025. Unfortunately the path back to the moon is long and fraught with danger both in the real physical sense and also in the contractual legal sense indeed legal battles between NASA SpaceX and Blue Origin have delayed the development of a critical component of the Artemis program. The human landing system for months that is until last November when the court finally ruled in favor of NASA and SpaceX that the ball has started to roll again SpaceX has actively worked on the lunar optimized starship development at its Starbase facility located in Boca Chica Village, Texas. NASA released in March a document that features photos of the SpaceX Starship Lunar Lander Elevator and Airlock prototype. SpaceX says it is working with NASA to ensure crew safety and performance the elevator will be used to bring astronauts down to the lunar surface. The document is a set of presentation slides with images of Artemis astronauts checking out the elevator and airlock including an image labeled Crew Cabin VR Evaluation It's probably a virtual reality video simulator of how the Starship cabin interior will look like and operate. SpaceX's Starship is designed to be much more than a lunar lander it's actually an end-to-end -end transport system designed to ferry people to Mars the vehicle launches and lands upright similar to the way. The company's Falcon 9 boosters return to Earth for reuse SpaceX has been working on Starship for years building prototypes and destroying them at a rapid pace as they perfect. The vehicle ability to land upright not only was it impressed with the way it landed, but NASA scientists with its massive payload as part of its Artemis program to return humans to the moon this decade NASA has a minimum requirement that its human landing system must be able to deliver 865 kilograms to the lunar surface this is based on the mass of two crew members and their equipment needed for a short stay. NASA wants to maximize the performance that Starship offers on lunar landings with the potential to carry large payloads. While the original HLS competition had a requirement to carry only 100 kilograms of cargo to the surface and back. In addition to two astronauts said Logan Kennedy HLS surface lead at NASA the later sustained missions will increase that to 182 kilograms to the surface and 160 kilos back with a goal of a thousand kilos down and back we're going to leverage all that we can on this mission to try and take up and down as much as we can using the size of their system Lisa Watson Morgan manager of the human landing system program and a presentation at the annual meeting of NASA's lunar exploration analysis group. On August 23rd, she said SpaceX has been a fantastic partner on HLS so far. With close cooperation between the company and the agency SpaceX has been involved in the Artemis 3 landing site. Selection process to ensure potential landing regions are compatible with Starship. NASA in turn has its personnel including astronauts visiting SpaceX facilities for reviews and hardware tests that includes one of the unique attributes of Starship which is the elevator required to go from the crew cabin to the surface it's a very tall lander it doesn't look like the traditional landers that we've all seen in the past so it can be hard to reconcile that mentally Watson Morgan said. 
she assured scientists at the meeting that the elevator design was robust saying that it was multi-fault tolerant and designed for operating in lunar conditions in his presentation. Kennedy showed images of a full-scale mock-up of the elevator. That SpaceX built for crew in the loop tests including ones where astronauts wore simulated spacesuits to test the ability to get in and out of the elevator some aspects of the overall Starship lunar landing architecture though remain unclear. The concept of operations for the lander involves SpaceX launching a Starship into low Earth orbit that will serve as a field depot which is filled by subsequent Starship launches that serve as tankers the lunar lander. How many launches will be required for a single Starship lunar landing mission an issue of contention during protests of the SpaceX HLS award last year by Blue Origin. In the meantime NASA tapped SpaceX to provide a second crewed demonstration landing on the moon as part of its Artemis lunar exploration program a huge win for SpaceX and a possible gesture at improving the relative lack of existing competition for such services. The second landing mission is for the Artemis IV which is currently on the books for 2027. On top of securing NASA's Artemis IV mission astronauts a ride to the lunar surface. The development on the Starship may finally be coming to an end as SpaceX has announced they are planning to launch it into orbit at some point in December. The deep space transport is designed to take humans to Mars. But first it will be used as part of NASA's Artemis mission to take humans back to the moon let's take a closer look. SpaceX is actively trying to turn the sci-fi dream of a Martian colony into reality the company is developing a 100 passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring more settlement within reach at long last. When Elon Musk revealed his idea to the world he laid out a basic plan a large spacecraft and a huge rocket both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable the rocket will launch. Meanwhile will make its way from Earth's orbit to Mars the craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well without the need for any additional landing craft or sent vehicles off Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. The interplanetary transport system the name was new as the billionaire had previously referred to as Envision concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter back then Musk stated that the its will stand 400 feet tall. When stacked the rocket will contribute most of that height measuring 254 feet tall to the ship's 162 feet there will be some overlap between the two vehicles during stacking which explains why the total height is at 416 feet both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next generation Raptor engine which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets the its ship will sport nine Raptors and the 40-foot wide booster will boast a whopping 42 allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff 3.6 times more than NASA's center and five moon rocket was able to generate and there won't just be one its ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sitting 1,000 or more. People pack spaceships to Mars every 26 months helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years Musk did not lay out plans for building this city that will happen organically as more and more people arrive on Mars he said. Comparing the its to the transcontinental railroad that helped open the American West a settlement from the East and Midwest in the 19th century and these pioneers won't just be the super-rich if all goes according to plan the its reusability could eventually bring the price of a Mars strip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people. He announced that it was now the BFR what stood for Big Falcon rockets the BFR was shorter slimmer and less powerful than its design predecessor measuring 348 feet it's all by 30 feet wide. When stacked and featuring only 31 Raptor engines on the booster and 6 on the spaceship but the biggest change. Concern the use of the spaceship rocket duo Musk announced that SpaceX eventually planned to employ the BFR for all of its space flight needs from launching satellites to ferrying people, and from Mars to cleaning up space junk in Earth orbit the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Therefore will be phased out over the long haul as will both the crew and cargo variants of SpaceX's Dragon capsule Musk stated that expanding the BFR's role in this manner will make the system much more affordable for SpaceX to develop and manufacture the BFR design then. Experienced a growth spurt that nearly took the system back to its original height in September 2018. Elon Musk told us that the rocket spaceship duo will now 
stand 387 feet tall when stacked the BFR ship will also sport seven Raptors instead of six and the vehicle announced sport four movable fins two near its nose and two bigger ones near the tail these fins will help the shipment maneuver its way to safe landings on worlds with significant atmospheres such as Mars and Earth. The two rear fins will also serve as landing pads as will a leg that's stylized to look like a fin two months later the BFR was no more Musk told us that the system will now be called Starship that will also be the spaceships. The huge rocket will be called Super Heavy at that point. SpaceX still planned to build the Starship vehicle out of carbon fiber. But has great thermal properties and is far cheaper he has since called the material switch the best design decision yet made on the its slash BFR Starship project in May 2019 Musk said. The current plan calls for six Raptors on the Starship vehicle rather than seven and a few months later he tweeted that Super Heavy will now sport 35 Raptors instead of 31. That brings us to the latest design update. Which Musk presented on September 28, 2019 from SpaceX's South Texas facility near the tiny village of Boca. Chica the billionaire didn't announce any huge changes though there was some more engineers super heavy will now have space for 37 Raptors though not all of those slots will be filled on every flight each mission will probably require at least 24 Raptors on the booster Musk had previously estimated. The total development cost of the Starship project to be between $2 billion and $10 billion he later stated that the price tag for SpaceX will be toward the lower end of that range. After the initial launch the rocket is responsible for delivering the Starship crew capsule to orbit around the Earth after it is done so the booster will detach and steer itself towards a soft landing. Back at the launch pad while this feat seemed almost impossible at first SpaceX rockets have been doing it successfully for several years. Now the next stage would involve the booster picking up a fuel tanker and carrying it into orbit as well this fuel tanker will then be used to replenish the Starship for its voyage towards Mars once en route the craft will deploy solar panels to harvest energy from the sun in an attempt to save precious onboard fuel for what will be an exciting and groundbreaking landing on the Red Planet. According to Musk's vision these crafts and their crew will remain in Earth's orbit until a planetary alignment brings the Earth and Mars closer together. This is a window that opens once every 26 months the long-term plan for SpaceX is to have many hundreds of spaceships waiting in orbit to depart en masse as part of the Mars colonial fleet perhaps. The most important part for this entire plane to work is the reusability of the boosters Musk's play and revolves around making sure that each spaceship is capable of being reused as much as possible he states that there is no way to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars. Without reusability it's a fundamental part of the plan he also adds that if the wooden sailing ships from the old days were not reusable, the United States probably wouldn't have existed SpaceX. Estimates it will be able to use each of its rocket boosters a whopping thousand times each tanker 100 times and each spaceship 12 times at least. The first missions are only estimated to carry around 100 people on each ship but gradually that number is expected to increase to more than 200. According to these estimates putting a million people on the surface of Mars could take anywhere from 40 to 100 years. After the maiden voyage the reusability of the rockets also means that once they're the crafts can then be used to return to Earth whenever needed after a few uncrewed cargo supply missions have already landed on Mars the human face of Colonization will be finally ready to begin one of the biggest hurdles that stand in the way is the Red Planet's notoriously thin atmosphere. NASA had to be extra careful when landing their Curiosity rover on the planets which weighed a mere 2,000 pounds and is a tiny fraction of the total payload that the manned missions will carry this is one of the reasons why SpaceX continues to perfect its supersonic retro rocket technology so they can gradually enter the Martian atmosphere and lower a very heavy spacecraft onto the surface using this reusable method that's not although entering the atmosphere is another problem that needs attention the craft needs to withstand a heated entry into the planet and perform a propulsive landing. The first few journeys would probably just drop off supplies and set up a propellant depot on the planet so return trips are possible when needed after the supply runs are complete humans can finally make their way to Mars. The first crew will need to rely on the digging beneath the surface and dredging up varied ice this will be used as a water source. 
which will eventually power the entire colony when the essential crews consisting of scientists and engineers have finally set up competition will start over. The first few seats it can take willing individuals to the newly colonized planet reports from NASA suggest that the massive Starship vehicle could launch on its first ever orbital test flight in December. The agency has a stake in Starship's progress NASA picked the giant rocket as the first screwed lunar lander for its Artemis program of moon exploration if all goes according to the current plan a Starship people put boots down near the moon's south pole in 2025 or 2026 on the Artemis 3 mission no Starship prototype has taken flight since May 2021 and all of its jaunts. So SpaceX's desire to fly an orbital mission with Starship prompted a lengthy environmental review by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and there are still several things to finish up that FAA review called a programmatic environmental assessment examined. Starship activities at Starbase SpaceX's facility near the city of Brownsville in South Texas The FAA concluded the assessment in June following numerous delays from late 2021 due to the need to consult with other agencies and deal with public comments, the FAA said. This summer that SpaceX needs to take 75 actions to reduce its environmental impact on the area despite SpaceX. Founder Elon Musk saying several times a Starship would be ready to go orbital soon Musk recently said. The target was November it seems that SpaceX hasn't quite finished with those FAA action items the coming mission aims to have to prototype 165-foot-tall Starship vehicle into orbit atop a super-heavy booster that has a height of 230 feet the stacked hardware is the tallest rocket system ever. SpaceX has already conducted several static fire tests in 2022 to get Starship ready for the approximately 90-minute mission that if successful would see the spacecraft splash down off. However SpaceX's human landing system contract with NASA requires several successful spaceflight tests before Starship will be authorized to put astronauts on the moon. NASA is also seeking a second vendor for crewed Artemis landing missions, but more options won't be ready until Artemis 5 at the earliest putting. SpaceX in line for landings on Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 in about 2025 and 2027 depending on how earlier missions go. The additional contract also known as Option will also allow SpaceX and NASA to pursue and demonstrate upgrades that will make Starship an even more capable and cost-effective moon lander for the long term the modification is likely to embark in the coming year. Thank you so much for watching.